First, I'd like to thank you all for taking time out of your day to show up. Especially you, big guy. This isn't the tutorial I planned for this week. I had planned to do a deep dive into animation graphs, but that's going to have to wait. Instead, I built this. A button. Now behold as I press this button and trigger animations of my choosing. Oh my. Oh. Okay, right. Let's get started. I often use trigger once entities to set up events when I'm experimenting, but it's not always obvious from the learner's perspective that some sequence is occurring due to the player walking through the trigger area. Also, buttons are pretty common in maps, so it doesn't hurt to know how to create one in VR for your Alex mods. I'm going to start with one of the templates that Valve provides, the basic setup, and that's just going to make sure I have everything I need to get started. Next, I want some model I can place the button onto. I'm going to head over to the models tab here and see if I can get lucky by just looking for a console. Pretty often what you're looking for is probably already in the models, so you don't necessarily have to build something yourself. And in this case, I'm going to grab this guy right here. So it's just a combine console, drag it in and drop it, and I'm just going to arrange it so that it's facing the player. So now I have a static surface to put a button on. I have to find a button. So let's see if Valve gives us any sort of materials we can use that make a good button. I'm sure there's going to be something here. Here we go. A button pusher. So let's grab the button pusher, toss it into the environment. I'm actually going to make this button bigger because I want a nice, big, obvious button. Okay, so I fought with the size for a little bit there. Had to change my grid from 64 to 4. And now I'm going to just position the button on the middle of this console. So let's rotate it around. I want to get the slope about right. So it sits nicely on the front. There we go. That looks good. Nice big red button sitting on that console. By default, the class of this button is going to be a prop static but I want to give it some physics, so I'm going to override this class and actually call it a prop physics override. Now I'm going to give it a name so I can refer to it from other entities in the map. So let's call this a button pusher prop. And for now, we're going to leave the rest of the properties at their defaults. In order for this button to trigger events in this map, I'm going to have to associate it with a funk physical button. I'm going to create a little cylinder here and we're going to move that cylinder over top of our existing button. And now we're going to go to this object's properties and we're going to change this class to a funk physical button. And I'm going to give it a name. This is going to be the button center pusher. There we go. So that's good there for now. To associate these two, I'm going to set the parent of the button pusher prop to the button center pusher. So we have an association between these two entities. The idea is this is going to allow the button to be pushed in physically, and then it's going to use its outputs to send a signal to some event in the map. Now, even though I've changed this to a funk physical button, it's actually going to draw over top of our original button. We don't want that. We want this to be not drawn. So I'm going to go to my materials here. Now I'm going to grab no draw, and we're going to apply that to that button there. So now that button should be see-through, so it can still be interacted with, it's still functioning as a button for this model right here, but we're not gonna see it when we load the map. Also, this arrow here, I kinda want this arrow to face through the button, so let's rearrange this so that that arrow, the push direction of the button is towards the button.
There we go. So now our arrow is going through the button indicating that we're going to push in that direction there. So here's our button. I'm going to walk over to here and just put my hand on the button and you can see how it reacts to a physical touch. It kind of pushes in a bit. So it feels like a real button. I can interact with it like a real button. And now we really just got to figure out how to hook this up to events so that when I push this button, something happens. Uh, now it's kind of weird, I can't quite push it with one finger, but I can definitely push it down if I use my whole hand. Now I want something to trigger, but I also want to touch briefly on animation graphs. I'm going to throw a combine soldier in here. And I'm just going to set him up so he doesn't attack us. And if you want to know how to do that, you can check one of my other videos on AI relationships. In Half-Life Alex, the Valve developers are using animation graphs, which takes inputs from the map, so from the AI, from things going on, from the situation, all different sorts of inputs come into these animation graphs, and the animation graph makes decisions about what animation the NPC should be doing at that time, depending on the inputs. These animation graphs can get pretty complicated, and I'd like to do a deep dive, so a complete tutorial on how you can use these, but for now, suffice to say, I happen to know that this Combine NPC starts off in an idle position and I can send him a signal to his animation graph to ask him to go from idle to dead. It's a real simple one. Most NPCs have a death animation that you can trigger just by sending a parameter to the animation graph. I'm going to grab my little button here. I'm going to go for my outputs. My target output is going to be on pressed. So as soon as someone presses the button, my target NPC is going to be my Barney. And I've just really gotten a habit of calling all friendly NPC combine soldiers Barney. Uh, it has nothing to do with the actual Barney in the video game anymore. It's just kind of what I've started calling them. The input I'm going to use is set anim graph parameter. And that's how you signal to the animation graph. You actually set a parameter. And parameters are set by the name of the parameter equals some value. And you can find these different parameters by exploring the animation graph. So here I'm going to set B animate death equals to true. And as soon as I set that parameter to true, that should tell Barney that he should animate his death. I'm going to talk about this a whole lot more later, but for now, if you just want to take a quick peek at one of the animation graphs, you can open the asset browser and look for an icon like this, which is called a Van M graph. And here it's the combine suppressor. If I open this up, I'm going to get the graph editor. And this is basically a bunch of state machines and animations connected all together in a graph that decide what particular animation an NPC is going to play at any particular moment depending on the parameters it receives from the game engine. There's a lot of complexity here. I'm going to go over a head crab in another tutorial. There's a state machine in here that handles death states. And if you open this up, this state machine has a transition that if the NPC is alive and you pass it the B animate death set to true, then he is going to run the death animation and the death animation. So you can see there is a line from here that goes up to one of the types of deaths. And if I click on that, it's going to show me the animation in the preview window of how he's going to die. So you can kind of work through these graphs and figure out what parameters to set in order to cause an NPC to do a particular animation. If everything is set up right, if I touch that button, that poor combine soldier is basically just going to pass out on the ground. So let's see. There we go. So we built a button that triggers combine soldiers to pass out. This finished map here with a button that kills all these NPCs, it's just a, basically a repeat of all these. So I named all these Barney, so each one has the exact same name, which means a single trigger can cause them all to animate. So this single trigger here impacts all of the Barneys, sets all of their animation graph parameters to be animate death true, 
and then they all animate their death. I had to make a separate one for this big guy here because I wanted him to delay by five seconds. This output is for Barney 2, so I just named him Barney 2. I set the delay to three seconds and then I set him to animate his death. And it turns out that he has the exact same parameter as the combined soldiers do. And there's a lot of parallels between the different NPCs and their animation graphs. And that's it. So have fun making buttons, use them in your maps. You can pretty much trigger any event you want from a button push, something simple like opening a door or causing NPCs to say something. I mean, there's a variety of things you can use buttons to trigger. I really hope you found that useful. If you did and you want more, consider subscribing, sharing these with other developers, and commenting below. Thank you for watching and good luck with your stuff like that. Oh, sh